Source from Tenderfoot Electronics is our new 10HP analog VCO for Eurorack. In this quick overview, we'll start off by going over the panel controls for the VCO. Now before I start, I'm just going to patch the triangle output into the oscilloscope. So at the top of the module, we have the octave dial. This is a 12 position full 360 degree rotary switch, um, allowing you to cover a huge range of frequencies from 16 kilohertz all the way down to really low rates where one cycle takes around two and a half minutes in LFO mode. To the left here, we have the fine tune dial giving you a range of just over one octave, allowing you to easily find the exact pitch that you need. In the middle, we have the mode selection switch, with up being the audio rate VCO and down being the LFO mode. Now we're just going to quickly jump through the different outputs at the bottom of the module just to show you those before covering the other dials on the panel. So first is the triangle output that we've already been listening to. Next is the down ramp saw wave. Third is the pulse output. Now this can be influenced by the pulse width dial just over here. Um, in the middle of the throw, you'll get 50% duty cycle square wave output. As you can see right on the oscilloscope. Going to either end gets you to 0% and 100% duty cycle. The pulse width can also be controlled via CV with the PWM CV input here and its associated attenuator. So if we just patch that in, The next output is the sine wave. And the polarity of the sine wave is indicated by the indicator LED just here, which is especially useful as visual feedback in LFO mode. So green being positive and red being negative. The final output is the sub oscillator. Now for this, we have a choice of three different outputs. So here we have a minus one octave 50% duty cycle square wave output. Next we have two octaves down. And the third output is minus two octaves at 25% duty cycle. Next, we'll look at the top row of jacks, which are our inputs. So if we just patch the sine wave output. The first jack at the top, on the top row is the one volt per octave input for selecting your pitches. So if we patch that into our quantizer and just take an output from a sequencer. The next jack along is the exponential FM. So let's patch our LFO into that. And for this input, we have an attenuator. So there we get some FM going on. Just next to that we have our linear FM input, again with an attenuator. And 
Next along is the pulse width modulation input that we've already looked at, but let's just patch that back in again. So here's our square wave. The final input just over here is the sync input. So just to show that off, let's patch a triangle wave out of our main oscillator. And we're gonna take a square wave from our second oscillator and put it into the sync input. So using the switch, we have either soft or hard sync. And you should be able to hear and see the difference. Now sitting next to the source, we have its companion module, Confluence. This is essentially a two-channel wave mixer and CV-controlled crossfader, and we'll run through that in the next video. Now that we've gone through all of the controls, we'll just have a quick jam to see how the module sounds when patched up.